I've had a most rare vision. I've had a dream past the wit of man to say what the dream was. But a man is an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on pace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But only thinks how slow this old moon wanes. Four days will quickly steep into four nights. Four nights will quickly drain away the time. Go, Philistrate, stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our fault. Happy be Theseus, hurry on and do it. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come out of complaints against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with fanging voices versus a fanging love, and stolen the impression of her fantasy with bracelets from thy hair, rings, gods, conceits, necks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailment and unhardened youth. With cunning half thou foot my daughter's heart, turn her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace, consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. Himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must look with his judgment. I do entreat your grace to pray. I know not by what power I make bold, nor how I may concern your modesty in such a most sincere thing as thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall in this case. I will please to wait for Either to die the death, or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. Will I grow, so live, so die, my lord? My soul is not to be stopped. <laughs> Take time to pause. By the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and I, for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or to wed Demetrius as he would. For on Diana's altar, protest for I austerity and single life. Just relent, Hermia. Lysander, yield that grace title is my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scorpio, Lysander. True, he hath my love. And what is mine, my love shall better than him. I do estate unto Demetrius. I am my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius. And, which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of you to serve him. Why not should I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, engaged with Nita's daughter, Helena. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes and idly dream on the spot at any concert. I must confess that I had heard so much. But being over full of self affairs, my mind did lose it. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up to death or to vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. Demetrius and Aegeus, come along. I must employ you in some business. With duty and desire, we follow you. How 
no, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? What chance the roses there to fade so fast? She begs for one of rain, which I can well. You tune them from the tempest of my eyes. I mean, thought that I could ever read, could ever hear thy tale of history. The course of true love never did run smooth, but I it was different in blood. Oh, cross to hide of being brought to low. Or else with scratch in respect of years. Spite too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell did she slept by any less. For if there were sympathy and choice, or death or sickness, did lay cease to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning in the cold night, that in the spleen unfolds both heaven and earth. And our men have power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour them so quick, pray things come to confusion. When true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict from destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross. A good persuasion, therefore, hear me, Hermit. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. But Matthews is her house her most seven leagues, and she respects me as an only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian love can not pursue it. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. Good Lysander, swear to keep thy cupid strong spell. By all the vows that ever men have broke, and numbers more than ever women spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me, for how truly will I be thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God speak, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes, their load stars, and in your tongue's sweet air. And more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. When wheat is green, when half words buds appear, sickness is catching, oh, we're favor so. Yours would I catch, fair Hermia. Here I go. My ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue sweet melody, were the world mine. Demetrius being baited, the rest I give to you translated. Teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smile such skills. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hates me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, but that fault were mine. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. And in the time I did Lysander see, it seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. Caroline, to your mind, we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold, the time that lover's flight hath still concealed, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the woods, while through you and I, upon fate for most beds, we're wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their closest state, there my life's hand and myself shall meet. And thence from Athens, turn away our eyes, to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet fair fellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight, and lovers food till morrow do be night. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu, as you and him, Demetrius, still I you. How happy some or other some can be. In Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye and hailed on oaths that he was only mine. And when this hailsome heat from Hermia felt, he so dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the woods will he tomorrow night pursue her? And for this intelligence I have thanks. It is a dear expense. But here and I, to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? Thank you, Professor Quince. You are best to call this generally. Uh... Oh, man, my man is going to the street. Oh! <laughs> Here's a scroll of every man's name just thought fit through all Athens to plan our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on their wedding day at night. Oh. Oh, First 
picture prints. Say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors and sort of grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy, the most cruel death of mm. Pyramus of Thisbe. <laughs> a very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now get Petra Queens. Call for your actors by the school. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready. Name of what I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover. Or a tyrant. A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask for some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I hold control in some measure. Yet, my chief humor is for a tyrant. <gasps> I can play Hercules rarely, or a part to a cat and to make all split. That was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. This is Hercules' vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Petra quits. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Hey, hey. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Disney, Disney. I am Pyramus of Everton, that this be dear and lady dear. Aww. <laughs> no, no. You must play Pyramus and flute you, Disney. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, proceed. Robin Starbling, the tailor. Here, Petra Quinn. Robin Starbling, you play Disney's mother. Uh, Tammy Snout, the tinker. Here, Petra Quint. Tammy, you play Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the joiner, you the lion's part. And I hope here's a play well fitted. Uh, have you the lion's part, Ryan? Pray, if it be, give it for him. Snug, steady. You may do it ex tempore, for there's nothing but roaring. <laughs> Let me play the line too. I'll roar. Roar! <laughs> I'll roar that I'll do any man's good heart to hear me. I'll roar so good that I'll make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. Let him roar! Let him roar! If you terribly, you would frighten the Duke and the Duchess that they would treat, and that would hang us all. That, that would, would hang us. us. I grant you, friends, if you shall fright the ladies out of their wits, there will be no more discretion but the hangers. But I will aggravate... My voice, my, my voice. So, I will warn you as gently as any sucking dove. Oh. Yeah. I will warn you as twere and any nightingale. Man, a, a gentleman like one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman like man. Oh. You must needs play for your mates. Oh. Well, I will undertake it. What beer am I best to play it in? Why, what you will. I'll just charge it in your straw colored beard. Oh, oh, your orange 20 beard, or hmm, your purple and green beard, or. Your French crown color beard, your perfect yellow. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you'd be playing barefaced. But here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night. And meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, oh, yes. and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draft a little property such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. 
we will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, at the at the Duke's oak we meet. Enough. Hold or cut bowstrings. How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through a bush, through a briar, over park, over pale, through a flood, through a fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere. I, sir, the fairy queen. And do her orbs upon the green. The cow slips tall from the pensioners' feet, and their gold coat spots you'll see. Those be rubies, fairy favors, and their freckles live their savors. I do seek some dew drops here and hang a pearl on every cow's such ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits. I'll be gone to serve the queen and all her elves alone. <coughs> the king doth keep his rebels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because she, as her attendant hath, a lovely boy stolen from a king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest wild. But she perforce withholds the love boy. No, no, crowns him with flowers and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in Grover Green by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do swear that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them beer. <laughs> Either I mistake your shape in making smart, or else you are that shrewd and neighbor sprite. Call Robin Goodfellow. <gasps> Ta -da! Are you not she that friends and maidens in the villagery, skims milk, and sometimes labors in the kern? Hmm. And Oh, this makes a breath this housewife churn. And sometimes we suggest a bear no farm. Hmm. Misleading night wonders, laughing at their heart. <laughs> Those that hog on and call you sweet pup. You do their work and they shall have good luck. Are you not sheep? <laughs> Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. And sometime lurk I in the gossip's bow and very likeness of a roastish crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I fall and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. The wisest aunt telling the saddest tale, sometime her three-foot stool mistaketh me. Then I slip from her bum, down topple she, and then Taylor cries and falls into a cough, and then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh and wax it in their mirth and knees and swear. <laughs> a merrier hour was never wasted there. But room fairies, here comes Oberon. I have forsworn his bed and his company. Very much wanted. And not I, thy lord. Oh, then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from Phelan and in the shape of Corin sat all day playing on pipes in verse, he loved to amorous Philida. Amazon, your buskin mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus reshame, Titania, bent at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? Oh, these are the forgeries of jealousy. <laughs> Since the middle 
summer, spring, met we on hill and dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or by the beach and margins of the sea to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But thy brawls hath disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds piping to us have vain, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which in the land have every pelting river made so proud they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman hath lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted, and in his youth attained a beard. The fall stands empty in the drowned field, but through this distemperature we see the seasons alter. The hoary headed frost, far in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and an old hymn's thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery. Set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, and the angry winter. All change their wanted liveries, and the maze world, by their increase, now knows not which is which. The same progency of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Yeah! yeah. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg little changeling boy to be my henchman. Oh, set your heart at rest. His mother was a votress of my order. And full often in the spiced air has she sat by my side, in the yellow sands marking the embarked traders in the flood. When we laugh to see the sails conceive and grow big bellied with the wanton wind, which she, with pretty and swimming gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire, she would imitate and sail upon the land and fetch me trifles and come back as rich from a voyage with merchandise. But she, being mortal of that boy did die. And for her sake, do I rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wedding did you stay? Perchance still after Theseus' his wedding day. If you'll patiently dance with us in our rounds and see the moonlight rebels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will dispel your haunts. Just give me the boy and I'll go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away, we shall chide downright if I longer stay. Fine, we'll go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle pug, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath at the rude sea grew so loud her song. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed, a certain aim he took at a fair festival thrown by the west, and smartly released his love shaft, smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft, quenching the chaste beams of the watery moon, and imperial vultures passed on and made a meditation, fancy free. Yet yeah, marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wounds. And made us call it love and idleness. Fetch me this flower, the herb I shoot thee once, and be thou here again. The juice of on sleeping eyelids will make our man or woman madly throw in the next light creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan to the league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll wash the tongue that she's asleep and drop the liquor of it on her eyes. And the next waking thing she looks upon, whether it be on lion, bear, or wolf or bull, on meddling monkey or busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I could take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I'm invisible and I will overhear their conference. Love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll stay in the other stay with me. Thou toldest me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am with wood within this wood, for it cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, 
<laughs> be gone and follow me no more. Uh, you draw me, you hard hearted admin. Yeah, you draw not iron for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I tell you this truth? Tell you that I cannot nor do not love you. And even for that, I do love I am your spaniel. And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me, but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only let me leave unworthy as I am. What worse place can I beg in your love than a place of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look upon thee. And I'm sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to commit yourself into the hands of the one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and no counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege. Therefore, it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I do not think I am in the night, nor doth this will that world of company, for in my respects, you are all the world. So how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee, hide from thee in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beast. The wild hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger, bootless speed, when cowardice pursues and valor flies. Do not stay thy questions. Let me go. Let me go and follow me no more. Or if you do not believe me, I will do thee mischief in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, in the field, you do me mischief, fie, Demetrius. Your wrongs do a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I will follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I do love so well. Fare thee well, nymph, ere he do leave this grove. Thou shalt fly him, he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it to me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and nodding violets grow, over canopy with luscious wood vine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There Titania sleeps some time in the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enamel skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with this juice, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and see through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in with disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do when the next thing he has spies may be the lady. Thou shalt know him by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect her with some care, that she may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. some vile thing is near.
Dear love, you faint with wandering in the wood. To speak chalk, I forgot our way. But rest as hermit, we think it good. And tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one trough. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. Well, take the sense sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean that my heart, which to yours is knit, for one heart to make of it. Lysander riddles very prettily. But gentle friend, friend for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. And good night, sweet friend. Thy love near altar to thy sweet life end. Amen. I meant to that fair prayer. Say I, then end loyalty when I end love. Here is my bed. Sleep gave thee all his rest. With half the wish, the wishes I do. Have I gone, but Athenian found I none, on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force of stirring love. Night and silence, who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said. Despise the Athenian maid, and hear the maiden sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Trill upon thy eyes I throw, all this flower this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid, sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, do not taunt me thus. Will thou darkling leave me? Do not so. Stay on thy peril, I alone will go. I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser my grace. Happy is Hermia wherever she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears, if so mine are oftener washed than hers. No, no, I'm ugly as a bear, for beasts who meet me run for fear. Therefore nor marvel though Demetrius do, as a monster, blind my presence dust. What wicked and dissembling glass of mine caused me to compare with Hermia's sphery eyne? But who is here? Lysander? Dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake, transparent Helena. Nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Well, fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. <sighs> Lysander, say not so. Do not say so. What, he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who would not change a raven or a dove? The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says you are the worthier maid. Things growing are not ripe until their season, so I being young, tempt not right now to reason. Touching now the point of human skill, reason becomes the marshal to my will, which lead me to your eye which I overlook. Love stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore was I to this king mockery born? Wherefore your hand did I deserve this scorn? Tis not enough, tis not enough, young man, that I never nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye. Good troth you do me wrong, good sooth you do. <laughs> What's such disdainful manner set for me to woo? But fare you well, for for I must confess, I thought you more of true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused, should another therefore be abused? She sees not Hermia. Hermia sleep thou there. And never mayest thou come Lysander near, for as a surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings. So thou, my surfeit, of all be hated, look the most of me and all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me. Do thy best to flick this crawling serpent from my breast. 
behind me for pity. What a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Methought a serpent eat my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander? What removed? Lysander? Lord? Without hearing gone? No sound, no word? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. No? Then I will perceive you all not nigh. Either death or you will find immediately. Are we all met? Pat, pat, and here's a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage, this Hawthorne Brig our tiring house. We will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Petra Quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus of Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw the sword to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> Which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? Her lack of a perilous fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. For better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but am Barton the Weaver. That will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue and it shall be written in eight and six. Nah, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afraid of the lion? Friends, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God shield us. A lion among ladies is the most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your line of living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell us she is not a lion. Nay, you must name her name, have half her face be seen through the lion's neck, and her herself must speak through saying this or to the same effect. Ladies, or fair ladies, I wish you, or I request you, or I entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. But no, I'm no such thing. I'm a lady like other ladies are. And there indeed, let her name her name, and tell them plainly she is snug to join her. Well, it shall be so, but there are two hard things, that is, to bring moonlight into a chamber, for you know, Pyrrhus and this be meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine the night we play our play? A calendar, a calendar, a calendar, a calendar. A calendar. A calendar. A calendar. Why then? May I leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine at the casement. Aye, or else one must come with a bush of thorns and says he comes to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Paris and Thisbe says a story did talk through the hole in the wall. You cannot bring in a wall! What say you, Bottom? Some lady or other must present wall, and let her have some plaster, or some loam, or some breath cast about her to signify wall. And let her hold her fingers this, and through that cranny wall, Pyramus and Thisbe shall whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come sit down and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break. And so every man, according to his cue. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen. What, a play tour? I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Pyramus, begin. Thisbe, stand forth. This be the flowers of odious savor. Well, odors! Odors. Odors, savor sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest, this be dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while. And by and by, I'll to thee appear. A stranger Pyramus and Eraclid here. Must I speak now? I marry must you, for you must understand he goes to see a noise that he heard and is to come again. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, like a red rose in a triumphant rear, most brisky juvenile and most eke most lovely Jew, as truest as truest horse could ever be. 
I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninus's tomb? Why, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter your cues path. It is never tired. Founder, this be our only time. Oh, oh monstrous! Oh, strange! I'll lead you about around. Sometime a horse I'll be, sometime a hound, a hog, a headless bear, sometime a fire, and neigh and bark and grunt and roar and burn, like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire, at every turn. <laughs> Why did they run away? This is a knavery of them to make me appear. Oh, bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an asset of your own? Do you? Bless thee, bottom, bless thee. Thou art translated. Okay. I see their knavery. This is gonna make an ass of me. <laughs> they fright me if they could, but I will not stir from this place. Do what they can, I am not afraid. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? I pray thee, gentle mortal, speak again. For mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled by thy shape. And thy fair virtue doth perforce move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. When you think, mistress, you shall have a little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The more the pity some honest neighbors will not make them friends. <laughs> Nay, I can creak upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Mm, not so neither, but... If I had wit enough to get out of this wood, it would be enough to serve mine own turn. No, out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt stay here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee, so go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch wolves from the deep and sing while on pressed flowers thy sleep. And I will purge thy mortal, um, Grossness? So like an airy spirit thou shalt go. Pea blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready. And I. And I. Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. And from the night tapers crop their waxen thighs and light them in the fiery glowworm's eyes for my love to bed and to arise. And pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from my love's eyes. Nod to him, elves. Do him courtesies. How now, mortal? How now, mortal? How now, mortal? Try your worship's mercy part of it. I beseech your name. Cobbler. I shall desire you a more acquaintance. If I cut my fingers, I shall make bold with you, good cobbler. Your name, honest friend? Peapods. I pray you, commend me to Mrs. Peapod, your mother, and Mr. Peapod, your father. Good Peablossom. I shall desire you a more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you? Mustard seed. I am a gentleman of your house, so half of your kind gift had made my eyes water ere now. I shall desire you a more acquaintance, good mustard seed. Come now, lead him to my bower. I wonder if Titania be awake, then when it was the next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Oh, here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with the monster is in love, near to her close and consecrated bower. While she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus' nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break. When I did him at this advantage take, an ass's null I fixed on his head, so at his sight away his fellows fly. 
They're senseless weak with their fears so strong, made senseless things begin to do them <laughs> wrong. For briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats, from yielders all things catch, and left sweet pyramids translated there. So when in that moment, so it came to pass, to Tanya waked and straightway loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> this falls out better than I can advise, but has Thalia lashed the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked a force, she must be eyed. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Well, why you rebuke him that loves you so, lay breath so bitter on this bitter foe? Now I but chide, but I should use thee worst, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being o'er shoes and blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I. Oh, pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. And yet, the murder looks so bright and clear. Is yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out, dog, out, cur! Thou drivest me past the dog of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. Oh, once tell true, tell true even for my sake. Durst thou look upon him being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not responsible for Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught I can tell. I pray thee, tell me the light as well. <laughs> And if I could, what could I get there for? A privilege never to see me more. From thy hated presence part I so. See me no more whether you be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow. Here for a while I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprison must perforce ensue, some true love turn and not a false turn true. Then fate o'er rules that one man holding troth, a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood goes richer than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find, all fancy sick she is and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. With some illusion look thou bring her here, I'll charm his eyes against thee, she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from the Tartar's bow. The flower of this purple dye, hid with Cupid's archer eye, sink an apple of his eye. When thou wakest, and she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageancy? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once woo one? That must needs be for a lun. And those things do best please me that befall preposterously. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. How could these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith should prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth or devilish holy prey, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give them to her? Or weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. These vows to her and I, both put in skills, will both weigh as light as tails. I had no judgment when to her I swore. None in my mind. Will you give them to her? Demetrius loves her, he loves not you. Mm. Oh. Helen, goddess, name perfect divine, unto what my love shall compare thine eye. Crystal is muddy. Show thy lips, those kissing cherries. Oh, let me kiss this princess with the seal of bliss. Ugh, spite! Hell! I see you're all bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and knew courtesy, you would not do me thus injury. Do you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, 
as when you are in show. You would not use a gentle lady so to vow and swear and to praise my parts when I am sure that you hate me with your hearts. You both are rivals in love, Hermia, and now you both are rivals to mock Helena, a trim exploit in manly enterprise to conjure up tears in a poor man's eyes with your derision. And none of normal sort would so offend a virgin and to escort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. You were unkind, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hermia, this you know I know. And here with all good will and Hermia, with all my heart, and Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena do me bequeath, whom I do love and will do to my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. If I loved her, if I ever loved her, all that love is gone. My heart lies so jerrended. Here to heaven it is home deserved. There to remain. Helen, it is not so. The spirits thy faith doth not know. Thy peril. Uh, oh, yonder, look where thy love comes. Yonder is thy fear. Uh, Lysander, why kindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay when love doth press to go? Oh, what love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more England's the night than all yon fiery eyes and O's of light. Why seek'st thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think. Cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. I now perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious, Hermia, most ungrateful maid. Have you with these conspired? Have you contrived? All school days, friendship, childhood innocence, and you will rent our ancient love asunder to join these men in scorning your poor friend? It's not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I'm amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as into scorn to follow and praise my eyes and face? And your other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare? So hung up with love, so unfortunate, miserable most, to love unloved, this you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. I do observe counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold a sweet jest up. This sport well carry and shall be chronicled. If you had any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. Very well, it is partly my own fault. With death, so absent, so true remedy. Stay gentle, Helen, Helena. Hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent, sweet. Do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen. I love thee by my life, I do. I swear that by which I will lose her thee to prove me false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, will John prove it still. Quick, come! I said, Richard tends all this. Away, you bum. No, no, he'll seem to break loose, but yet not come. You're a tame man. Go. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing. Let loose, for I will shake thee from me like a serpent. What change is this sweet love? Thy love, out of medicine, oh hated potion, hence. Do you not jest? Yes, soothe, and so do you. Demetrius, I'll keep my word with thee. <sighs> I would I had your word, for I perceive your word is faulty. I trust not your word. What, should I hurt her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me, wherefore, O oh me. What news, my love? I'm not I, Hermia, or not you, Lysander? I'm as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid, and earnest shall I say. I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love! What have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? 
Have you no maiden shame? <laughs> no touch of bashfulness? Will you rip answers from my gentle tongue? You, you counterfeit, you, you puppet! Uh, puppet? Why so? I that way goes the game. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you girls so high in his esteem because I am so low? Uh. Speak. I'm not yet so low, but that my nails can't reach uh. thine eyes. I beg you, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I have no gift in all shrewishness. I am a rightful man in my cowardice. Let her not strike me. Maybe perhaps you may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower? Hark again! Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you? Save that, in love unto Demetrius. I told him of your stealth unto this wood. He followed you, for love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence and threatened me to strike me, to spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you will let me quite go to Athens, will I bear my folly fast and to follow you no further. Let me go and see how simple, how fond I am. Why get you gone? Who's that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid, she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir. She shall not. Oh, she is keen, shrewd. In school she was a vixen. And though she be but little, she is fierce. Low? Nothing but low and little? Why must you suffer her to stop me like this? Let me come to her! Get you gone, you garden gnome. You minimus of hindering knockrest maid. You beat, you acorn. You are too officious. Helena is a goddess. A beautiful, perfect being. You are nothing but a little gnome. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest to try whose right down her mind is most in Helena. Follow me, cheek by jowl. You mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. I will no longer be in your cursed company. And though your hands are quicker than mine to fray, my legs are longer to run away. This is thy negligence. Hast thou mistakest, or else committest thy knaveries woefully? Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise that I have moited in Athenian's eyes. And so far am I glad it so did sort, as their jangling I esteem a sport. <laughs> These lovers seek a place to fight. Hi, therefore, Robin, overcast the night. The starry welcome cover thou anon with drooping fog as black as Acheron. And lead these testy rivals astray, as one come not within another's way. Then crush this herb into life in his eye. When they next awake, all this derision shall seem dream and fruitless vision. Then back to Athens shall the lovers wend, with leak whose date till death shall never end. Whilst I in this affair, I do thee employ, all to my queen and beggar for the boy. Then I will her charm thou release from Moses' view, and all things shall be peace. Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one now. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me, then, to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, or art thou in some bush? Where does I hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou looks for wars and will not come? Come, recreant, come, thou child. I'll whip thee with a rod, he is defiled. That draw a sword on thee. Where art thou now? Follow me. We'll try no manhood here. Do 
He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls and he is gone. The villain is much lighter heel than I. I follow fast the faster he did fly. That fallen am I a dark uneven way, and here will rest me. Come thou gentle day, for if but once thy show me thy great, great light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. Abide in me if thou darest, thou runnest from me. Come hither, I am here. Nay, now thou mockest me, if I ever see thy face by daylight. Nay, go the other way. A weary night, a long and tedious night. Shine as the comforts of my east. Shall I be back to Athens by daylight? From these that my poor company detests, and sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a little while from my own company. Yet but three, come one more. Two both kinds make up four. Never so weary, never so in woe. Bedabbled with the dew and torn with the briars. I can no further walk, no further go. My legs keep no pace with my desires. Heaven shield Lysander, they mean a friend. Sleep sound on the ground. I'll apply to thy eyes, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb known that every man should take his own in your waking shall be shown. And the country proverb known that every man should take his own. In your waking shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Come, sit thee down upon thy flowery bed while thy amiable cheeks thy deep boy. And stick sleek musk roses in thy sleek smooth head. And kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle joy. Where's Pea Blossom? Ready. Stretch my head, Pea Blossom. Where's Cobweb? Ready. Cobweb, good friend. Get you your weapons in your hand and cool me a red hip would be. And good friend, give me the honey bag. Don't fret yourself too much in the action. And good friend, good friend. Take care of the honey bag. Break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with the honey bag. Where's mustard seed? Ready. Give me your leaf, mustard seed. I pray you, leave your courtesy, good friend. What is your will? Nothing but the help cobweb scratch. For methinks I am marvelously hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass. For if my hair do to but tickle me, I must scratch. What, will thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the togs and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desires to eat? It's like a preventive. Or I can munch on your good dry oats. Or I have a good desire to some sweet hay and good hay. So half no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall find the squirrel's new hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I'd rather have a handful or two of dried peas, but I pray you, let none of your people stir me, for I have a great exposition of sleep come upon me. Come, sleep now, and I will win thee in my arms. Fairies, be away, and always be gone. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. See, thou the sweet sight? Her daughters now I do begin to pity for meeting her late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool. I did upbraid her and fall out with her. And then she had his hairy temples then had rounded. When I had at my pleasure taunted her and she in mild terms begged my patience. I then did ask of her her changing tile, which straight she gave to me and had her fairy send him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy. 
I will do this hateful imperfection from off her eyes. Sweet puck. Take this transformed scout from off the head of this Athenian swain, that when he awake when all the others do, may all back to Athens then again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as a fierce vexation of a dream. But now, I will be so true. Be as thou wast don't be, see as thou wast don't see. Diane's bud or keep its flower, hath such force and blessed power. Now, my queen, Titania, awake. My Oberon! Oh, what visions have I seen? I dreamt I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. Ah! Oh, how came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes low with his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. When thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes peep. Come, my queen, take hands with me and rock the ground where on these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity. Tomorrow in midnight solemnly, dancing in Duke Theseus's house triumphantly, where the lovers shall be wedded with Theseus all in jollity. Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, silent sad, we the globe can come to soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord. And in our flight, tell me how it came to be that I was found with these mortals sleeping on the ground. But soft, what nymphs are these? Oh, my lord, this, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander, this Demetrius, this Helena, all letters Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up early in order to observe the rite of May, and hearing our intent came here in grace and solemnity. But Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia must make her choice? It is, my lord. Go, bid that the huntsmen wake them with their horns. I shall reply amazedly, half sleep, half wake. But as yet, I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, or truly would I speak, and now do I bethink me. So it is, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the pearl of the Athenian law. Enough, enough, my lord. You have enough. I beg the law, the law pontiff's head, that Demetrius would have stolen away he would. You have your wife and me and my consent, all the consent that she should be your wife. Theseus, my fair lord, Helen, inform me of their stealth into this wood. And I in fury followed them, and Helen in fancy followed me. But in this wood, I realized that my love is not for Hermia, but Helen. This beautiful goddess, please let us be lovers. Let us wed, just as you and your love do. There are lovers who are fortunately met. Of this discourse, we will talk later. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For this tower, by and by with us. These couples shall be eternally knit. For the morning now is something worn. Our proposed hunting shall be set aside. Away we go to Athens, three and three. We'll have a feast of great solemnity. Come, Aegeus. These things do seem small and indistinguishable. He thinks I see things with his parted eye when everything seems double. Why, are we even awake? Well, I guess there was Theseus and Aegeus. Yeah, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow. Hi, what's the matter? Let us live up on the cloud. Hmm. 
When my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is Moo's Fair Pyramids. Hi ho, Peter Quince. Flute the bellows mender, snout the tinker, startling. God's my life. Still learn hands and they left me asleep. I've had a most rare vision. I've had a dream, past the wit of man to say what the dream was. But a man is an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Methought I was and methought I had. Man is but a patched fool if he were to offer to say what methought I had. The eye of man has not heard here and the ear of man has not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste his tongue for conceive, nor his heart to report what dream I had. I will go tell Petra Quince to write a ballad about this dream. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Has he come home yet? He cannot be heard of out of debt he has transported. If he come not, then the play is married. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. You have not a man in all Athens to discharge pyramids but he. Oh, but he has only the best wit of any handicraft men in all of Athens. Yeah, and the best voice, too. He's a very paramour for a sweet voice. Oh, you must say a paragon. For a paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. Masters! The Duke is coming down from the temple. There is to be two or three lords and ladies who are married. If our goosebore had not gone forward, we'd been all made men. <laughs> Not, not six pence a day, and he could not have escaped six pence a day for playing pyramus, and the duke would not have given him six pence a day. Playing pyramus, I'll be hanged. He was <laughs> Where are these ladies? Where are these hearts? Bottom! Oh, most courageous day, oh, most happy hour. Bada, Friends, I am the discourse wonders. But ask me not what, for if I tell you I am no true Athenian, I'll tell you everything as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I'll tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together, good string to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps. We will meet presently at the palace. Every lady look over her part, for our short and the long is our plays preferred. In any case, let this be have clean linen, and let not her that plays the lion, but let her pare her nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claws. And most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are the utter sweet breath. I do not doubt but to hear them say, this is a sweet comedy. Now no more words, away, go away. More strange than true, I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers of madmen have such seething brains, such shaking fantasies that apprehend. But all the stories of the night told over, and all the minds transfigured so together, but have so strange and here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends. Joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have for this evening? To wear away the long age of three hours between after supper and bedtime. What abridgment have you for this evening? There is a brief. How many to the ring? A tedious and brief scene of young Pyramus and his lover Thisbe, very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. Mm -hmm. This is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? The iron tug of midnight hath off twelve. Lovers, to bed. I fear we shall not sleep over the coming of morn. As much as we this night have watched this powerful, gross play, hath we gulped the heavy gate of night. And we will hear it. If we offend, it is with our good will. To think we come not to offend, but with good will. To show our simple skill, that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite. 
we do not come as minded to contest you. Our true intent is all for your delight, that you should here repent you. We are not here. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are about to know. the show, but wander on till truth makes all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This actor with line and breath cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder. And through the false hole, poor souls are content to whisper, at the which let no man wonder. This actor with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn presented the moonshot. This grizzly beast, which one hide my name? In this same interlude, it doth befall that I once not by name present a wall. Uh, In such a wall as I would have you think, well, through the well. pretty hole through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often, very secretly. Pyramus approaches the wall, silence. Oh, great blue night, oh, night with you so black, oh, night, oh, night, oh, lap, lap, lap. I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot, and thou, oh, 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 oh sweet, oh, lovely, oh, but what's the eye? No Thisbe do I see. Oh, look and walk from whom I see no place. Curse be thy stone for thus deceiving me. Would you desire Lyme to speak better? <laughs> no, truth, miss, he should not, for this deceiving me is this piece cute. She is an edge to that breach, and I am aspiring through the wall. Yonder she comes. Yonder she comes. Go to bring a man to the side. It's true, my heart, but I pity 
Oh, wherefore didst thou lie in frame? Which is no, no, which is the most fairest dame? Come, tears go down. Out sore and wound the Papa Pyramus. I that left Pap, where heart doth pop. Does, die, does, does, does. Now am I dead, now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. So lose thy light, now won't take thy flight. Now die, die, die. Now the hungry lion roars in the wolf be howls the moon. Now it is the time of night that graves all gaping wide. Everyone let forth his stripe in the church pathways to glide. And we fairies that do run from the presence of the sun, following the darkness like a dream, now are frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hell of house. I'm sent with room before to sweep the dust behind the door. Do the house give glimmering light? Now the dead in jaws of fire, every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as birds from briar. First, rehearse your song by note, to each word a warbling note. Hand by hand, the fairy race, we shall bless this If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. In this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck are liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. <laughs> 